Manchester today, Hotel Football, for the final press conference for a huge fight on Saturday night called England against Scotland, Manchester against Glasgow. Two of the great servants of British boxing. I can't, I've lost count of the amount of people that have said, I don't want to see either of them lose. Well, tough, unless it's a draw, because one of them's going to, and it's all on the line. Like I said, a three-weight world champion in Ricky Burns, former world lightweight champion in Anthony Crawler, both coming off unification fights as well. This is just a wonderful, wonderful fight of two great fighters as well. It's a big card on Saturday night, um, chief support as well. I think one of the rising stars in the welterweight division, and uh, of course just recently awarded Boxing Writers Young Fighter of the Year, and plenty of people talking about him in America as well this week when I've been out there. Sam Eggington defending his European title. A brilliant lightweight clash as well. Saw Robbie Barrett defeat Scotty Cardle for the British lightweight title in Glasgow. He's faced his mandatory changer, and that's North East Lewis Ritson in a really, really good fight for the British lightweight title. So much young talent on the card as well. Plenty of that here today. Joe Gallagher's got about 400 fighters on the card, and the odd one out on the table is Conor Bent down the front, who is just really coming of age now, 8-0, been looking sensational in his last couple of fights, got another big step up on Saturday night, really is becoming an emerging force in the welterweight division. Marcus Morrison, of course, coming back from that defeat, looking to go again, huge support in Manchester. Scotty Cardle, who we mentioned earlier, first fight since that British title defeat, looking sharp and hungry to get back to title contention. Pleased to welcome Sam Hyde on the card as well, Joe Gallagher's new cruiserweight charge, very exciting puncher from Manchester as well, big support. And Jose Burton, who I think uh, is definitely one of the most feared men in the light heavyweight division. There's a lot of hype around the division at the moment, and he's someone who's ready for those big fights um, and looks forward to returning to the bill on Saturday night. Sam, I'm going to start with you. Um, back on the show, obviously you've boxed on some of our cards before, but with Joe Gallagher, your first fight on a major card. Yeah, it's been about two years since I've been on the um, back on the big arena show, so I'd like to firstly thank Matt Truman, Eddie, and also my manager Joe for getting on. And um, I feel like, you know, it, it just feels right straight away being back on at Manchester underneath collar with all my um, team, new teammates. and. Um, I've settled in great in the gym and I'm looking to settle in um, on Saturday night in the ring and uh, make a name for myself finally. You're in that gym, it's absolutely buzzing at the moment, obviously everyone getting ready for um, previously last week the, uh, the Liverpool show, but a huge amount of Gallagher's gym fighters on this show, looks like a great atmosphere down there at the moment. Yeah, definitely it is. I've, um, I've never obviously been lucky enough to experience like, success, breed success. And, being around champions like these, sat next to me, Crawler, Calum Smith, everyone. You just bring your game to the next level. And it also gives you that confidence in yourself that you know that you'll be able to mix it at that level one day. And um, I'm definitely with the right team. And my confidence is through the roof. And um, I'm really excited, definitely. Scotty, back in action. You look great at the public workout last night. How are you feeling ahead of your return? Renewed hunger, of course. And Obviously, your, your belt being contested on the night, you want to get back into contention for that. Yeah, uh, definitely renewed hunger. Uh, as, as far as I go, I'm, I'm as good as my last performance, and for me, that's just not good enough. So, uh, I feel like I've got a statement to make. I'm fighting Lee Conway, he's a tough, durable kid, but uh, I want to make some noise on the night and hopefully get back to title status. I have to ask you, from an interest point of view, the British lightweight title up here. Who do you fancy in that fight? Don't sit on the fence. I know you want the winner, but it should be a good fight. Yeah, I, I think it'll be a great fight. I've uh, I've sparred Lewis Ritson in the past, and obviously I've I've uh, experienced my first defeat with uh, Barrett. So it's a tough one to call. But going off the sparring, I've got to say Lewis Ritson's going to be a bit of a handful. And I think he may he may uh, he may steal that belt off uh, Barrett, but. Whatever happens, uh, I think the right thing to do is to fight me in the, the next fight. I think that's, I think it's all my right, to be fair. I'll take either one, so good luck to the both of the boys. Good luck, we look forward to seeing your return Thanks. on Saturday. Marcus, obviously been a frustrating little period for you. I'm sure you've learned a lot, particularly from the Jason Wellborn fight. But uh, looking back to get to winning ways on Saturday night. Yeah, there's been a few speed bumps, you know, in, in the road, you know, the last few months. But, you know, Saturday I'm looking forward to you know, proving people wrong and uh, climbing back up that ladder and getting back to where I was, you know, uh, prior to the few months uh, that I've, I've been through. But 
you know, I've got, like I said, I've got a lot to prove and I'm looking forward to getting the ball rolling and, and doing it on Saturday. Jose, it's been a frustrating period for you. Obviously, uh, mandated in the final eliminator to fight Anthony Yardy, decided not to take that fight. And now you wait for a potential shot at the winner of Callum Johnson and Frank Buglioni. I know Callum's a gym mate of yours, but important fight for you on Saturday, getting over the line, winning that, and looking for a title shot before the end of the year. Yeah, um, every fight's an important fight, really, but the, I've got to get over the line with this one. But the, these are not the fights I want. I want the, the big fights. Um, I've had 20 fights. I've, met, I've lost one fight, but out of all them 20 fights, I've maybe lost uh, four rounds. So my ranking is not where it should be at the minute, but as you said, I'm probably the most feared light heavyweight in the country at the minute. Nobody wants to fight. The likes of Yardy, he pulled out. Um, Bugley only, I'd love to fight him again. Any of them, um, I'd just like to fight any of them, because I reckon I'm the best. When you look at the division, it's fantastic at the moment, obviously, from a world scene. But Andre Ward retired now, but you've got Kovalev, you've got Adonis Stevens as well, and the young guns coming through as well, but Bitiev, Bivol, these very impressive young fighters, and domestically as well, so yourself, Callum Johnson, Anthony Yard, Buglioni. Those, those two particularly, Buglioni and Yardy, targets for you in the next six months? I'd love to fight. I'd fight them on the weekend. Um, and any time at all they want it, they can have it. Because um, I believe I can beat both of them quite easily as well. Look, I got beat off of Buglioni, but I lost two rounds in that fight. Um, unfortunately, it was the, uh, the important round I lost, you know. But um, just one of them things, yeah. Any time they fancy a fight, they can have it. Connor? Um, when we looked at your schedule, Manchester was the one that you said, please get me on that one. Obviously, close teammates with Ricky Burns as well. You love being on the big shows. You also love being on uh, your call last time out. It was another great performance. And really look for like a new fighter since you returned from injury. Yeah, definitely. I mean, I love fighting in Manchester. The support I've got is unbelievable. Uh, you know, uh, when I fought your call as well, that was um, an amazing experience for me as well, you know. I was more nervous going into fighting a your call than I was to a packed O2. I don't know how you add that up, but it, it's just the way I felt. It's the home of British boxing. You know, the sport I get in Manchester, you know, is unbelievable. And I look, look forward to this Saturday, you know, um, showing you a lot of my progress and um, coming off the back of two good performances after my injury. And, you know, really showing you a lot of what I've been learning, what I've been working on. And in this fight, I don't know what the outcome's going to be. You know, I don't know what I'm going to throw in the, in the moment. It just happens. So, um, you know, no prediction, it's just going to be an entertaining fight, um, which is exactly what I love, giving the supporters. Obviously a bustling gym down at Simsy's gym at the moment, on a good run, good win for O'Hara Davis last week, My, uh, Martin J. Ward picking up the British and Commonwealth titles, John Ryder in a big fight next week, and of course your charger, you've sparred many rounds with Ricky Burns in a, in a big fight, it's another big night for Simsy's gym as well. I think Ricky's mad, by the way. Like, he trains like, like a madman, you know, he's, he's someone you look up to in the gym, you know, he always wants to do that extra bit, do you know what I mean? And I sit there and think, how on earth do you do it? And now I'm 15 run in the morning, I felt sick for the next two days, I told Tony I can't do this, mate. You know, he tells me to go running with Rick all the time, but I just ain't having it at a minute. <laughs> you know, so um, yeah, you know, he's unbelievable, he does numerous rounds with me, numerous rounds with somebody else and then some more, do you know what I mean? So, you know, all you can do is look up to him as a role model in the gym, you know, ask him, ask him questions on how, how you finish the race, do you know what I mean? In life, you don't just stay in boxing and fall out, I love it, he's he just fully dedicated to the game, you know, he's definitely someone you look up to for all young fighters and all athletes. Thank you, Connor. Can't wait to see you box Manchester Arena on Saturday night. Lewis Ritson, uh, this is the part I'm really looking forward to. A lot of people have been talking about you for a while, and I guess uh, it all gets real on Saturday night. All those little fights that you had, you know, strolling through. Now it's crunch time to see if you can go and become British champion at Manchester Arena. Yeah, definitely. I think the time's right now for, for us to fight on the big stage, being on the small old shows. Now just feeling fit and feeling ready, and I think me and uh, Robbie might. Steve Sean Saturday night, be a good fight. Obviously he's come from those small ball shows as well, come through um, and a big win for him against Scotty Cardle. And now perhaps he's got that little bit more big event experience than you. But many tipping news, Scotty said there to, to become champion on Saturday. Yeah, I mean Scotty done some good rounds when we were down there for the Sean, the Sean Dodd fight. So yeah, just know that obviously Robbie last fight was on the big show and it's my first time on it as well. So. He's got the experience, but I think I can do the job and get the job done. North East, 
always looking for big stars. Plenty of support coming for you to the arena on Saturday night as well. Real opportunity for you to make a name for yourself in the North East and in British boxing. Yeah, massive. Like I say, my dad's, my dads are really well selling all the tickets for his four the Geordies that come down there. We'll have massive support and time to do the job. Robbie, obviously a big win for you last time out. And uh, coming from those small hall shows, Steffi Ball's done an incredible job. Do you feel more comfortable now at these events and really feel like this is an important fight for you? Yeah, I feel feeling more comfortable apart from these these days talking in front of crowds and sitting my seat. Um, yeah, the, like you say, I come from small little shows, but gradually as opponents they've been getting better and better. So and then obviously had a good good fight last time against Cardinal, um, which shows how me at the British level. And I'm looking forward to the first defensive title. What do you expect against Lewis Ritson, style wise, and how do you see the fight playing out? Um, we expect a good fight, a good hard fight. Um, the, well, we're prepared for everything, so I'll just 12 rounds, hard fight, whatever, it's whichever way it goes, as long as I win, I'm happy. And likewise for you, plenty of support coming down. Yeah, there'll well. be a few hundred coming from Barclay. Yeah. Good, good, good. It'll be a lively night. Sam Eggington, young writer, boxer of the year. So I know that might not mean a lot to you, well I hope it does, but in boxing terms that's a big award to win and uh, plenty of really good fighters have won that in the past. An important fight for you on Saturday night, uh, your opponent's uh, en route, travelling, you'll we'll definitely see him at the way tomorrow. A tricky fight as well, people talking about you moving to world level, but a very important fight for you on Saturday. Yeah, no doubt, Saturday night's um, very important, yeah, you got to give you know, credit to the opponent, he's a managed challenger for a reason, so... Um, we've done what, what we've had to do in camp, you know, and more. So, you know, come Saturday night, um, we should be more than ready. I know he's a bit tricky, but you know, the last few have been. So, uh, you know, I've done what I've had to do, and I always say, as long as I've done what I've had to do in the gym, you know, it shouldn't matter what the other kids bring in. Talk about styles. Interesting. Do you feel that you've improved as a fighter from fighting those styles? This, this opponent as well, quite awkward. Rodriguez was awkward as well. Frankie Gavin, Bradley Ski, really boxing against your style and actually fighters that don't generally suit you, but getting in there and winning. Yeah, it's just you know just just experience of of, of the, the sort of kids I'm boxing. I mean, everyone wants to to box on the back foot all of a sudden and, and, and move around and. You know, it's, it's a lot, everyone's trying to copy, you know, the big stars, but, I, I, you know, it's, my boxing is, is my boxing, I'm not going to change, it, it, it's come forward, it's relentless, so, um, you know, picking up, you know, bits to do against these sort of lads, um, and it, it's still going to be a good step for this, for this challenge. The division changing, of course, Errol Spence winning the title, but more importantly, Jeff Horn winning the WBO title and the WBA regular championship becoming vacant with yeah. the Montpiece and vacating the title. It's starting to open up now in the division and yeah. you feel like you're only a couple of fights away now from, from that level. Yeah, definitely. I mean, you know, I've, I've won the European, you know, Saturday night I'm, I'm going to defend it. You know, there's only one way from there, you know, there's only one more step to go. So, um, fingers crossed, you know, we'll, we'll get through Saturday, no scrapes. Um, hopefully we'll get, we'll get a big fight before the end of the year. On to the main event, and uh, firstly from Team Burns, Charlie Sims. Charlie, uh, your charge, Ricky, been looking great in the gym, talking to him earlier, he's drinking, he's eating, uh, made the weight well, or will do tomorrow, and may have surprised a few people in that process as well, but a big fight, and again, relentless uh, effort from Ricky Burns in his camp. Yeah, I think, um, obviously taking this fight, Ricky's been fighting at light world to weight for the last couple of years, so obviously he's dropped down to light weight. Uh, he's trained extremely hard. I think that everybody can expect, or everybody at least in this room, or purest boxing fans will know that both of these fighters will be coming into this fight really fit. Um, they're both strong, um, but for me, it's, it's Ricky Burns' mindset. And I'm just touching on what Conor Ben said earlier. He's this morning I see Ricky, and he said to me, "This is going to be his 49th fight," and he said to me, "I'm going to walk into this fight, going to give it the best performance of my career." And I think, for me, walking into your 49 fight, achieving almost everything as a fighter, being a free weight world champion, if you look at his credentials, he's lost everybody. And I think he's, he's going in to put a great performance in and put his, his, his legacy on the line here. And I think that's, what's going to, what, that's what he's going to need to continue fighting at world, world class fighters moving on. Quite remarkable, 49 fight, unbelievable. Joseph? 
a busy night for you, yeah. um, and of course, a huge night for you as well. Um, your charge, Anthony Crawler, I've been working with him for a long time. You understand what's on the line on Saturday night? Yeah, um, listen, it's thanks to you, um, Sky, um, for putting the kids under the card. Um, before I touch on Anthony, a big night for some of my charges. They've been told on all certain terms in the gymnasium on Sunday. They had to perform and they had to do it in style on Sunday night, uh, Saturday night. People like Scott Cardell, Jose Byrne, no point talking about what in British title fights. Got to go out there and earn them and um, show that at the back and uh, the way that they're performing in the gym. They're like a little pack of hungry wolves sat at the bottom of the table there. They can't wait to get in there Saturday night. Um, but as far as uh, Anthony Crawler, this is a great fight this. And um, listen, I'm di disappointed as I had more of a build up as such that Two nice guys can finish first in boxing. Huge credit to Ricky Burns, being a professional 16 years. I think he turned professional 16 years ago next weekend. And uh, just let that sing in 16 years. And if you look at his record, who is for Terence Crawford, Raymond Beltran. I mean, the way the list it goes on, and he's acquitted himself well in there. So uh, I just like, like I say, with Anthony Crawler, he's, he's come back from injuries where he thought his career was finished. Didn't think he'd fight again. We were sat here at an emotional press conference to announce the Perez fight, and uh, he went and he won it at the second time of asking. Fought the, the feared Barossa, came through the storm. We went into the eye of the storm that night and won. And then he went in with the, one of the best pound for pound fighters in the world, Jorge Linares. Um, and you seen last weekend uh, against Luke Campbell, he fought, he did well, and everyone knows that Linares he didn't he seem to like get out of third gear, did he? he? He just he had the fight in the bag and just went through it. So. Listen, huge credit to both fighters. I think um, they both deserve a huge round of applause for what they've both achieved in boxing up to now and the way that they've conducted themselves. So I'd like everyone to give Anthony and Ricky Burns a huge round of applause. I think tactically in this fight, I know you won't give your tactics away, but people are just expecting this just to unravel very quickly and just to be a, a very high paced. Uh, active fight. Are you expecting that as well? I mean, I know you'll have a game plan, but ultimately these guys are going to go to war on Saturday night. I, I think I think Tony has a problem. Uh, if you watch Ricky's fights and I have with Anthony's fights, they'll all come out with the game plan. But that devil inside them, that, and you see that domestic level. You watch Ricky when he fought Nicky Cook, when he fought Kevin Mitchell. Same with Anthony when he fought John Murray, Gavin Reese. They just go, ah, sling the tactics, let's have it. And um, sooner or later in the fight, Saturday night, I think that's going to happen. Um, Ricky's a very proud fighter. Like you say, he's fighting for his legacy. Anthony Crawler is very proud. He's coming back from um, a loss, as is Ricky. And they've got to go in there on Saturday night and uh, give it their all. And uh, the fans haven't got the short change Saturday night. Great undercard, and like you say, a great top of the bill fight as well. Thanks, Joe. Ricky, let's have it. I think that sort of sums you up, really, watching you in the gym. And I saw a little tweet from you yesterday, yesterday saying, hello Manchester. You're excited to be here, aren't you? You're excited by this fight. These are the kind of fights that you live for. I know, I draw them just, again, I'm just really looking forward to Saturday night. Um, when this fight was first announced, obviously, we decided to drop back down the elite way, and Tony had these concerns and that, but I think he knew that the, after especially the first couple of weeks of camp, um, how strict I was being and how much I was putting in the gym um, and draw I've done the way it's so comfortable and I've, I've always said that if we never got the opportunity to fight obviously for the, the third weight world title who knows I could still have been campaigning at lightweight in the round um, but I'm feeling good um, even last night doing the, the public workout um, when I was in that ring although I was only just shadow boxing everything feels right, everything's went to plan for this and I just can't wait to get in yeah, it's important that you actually really wanted to stay at lightweight and obviously it was others saying you, know, you took a fight and that was a, a big fight for you at the time coming off a loss but then moving obviously the world title opportunity but ultimately in the back of your head always was that 135 was your preferred weight. I know we'll draw, like I said, in the build up to this, um, don't get me wrong, it's been tough having to cut back on portion sizes and stuff like that but um, I've done the weight comfortably, that's not been an issue. Um, so again, I'm just looking forward to getting them all over, um, and then I can concentrate fully on the, on the fight. But we, we know what to expect here. This is going to be a good hard fight, and as everybody's been saying here, um, it's going to be a great night of boxing, a great undercard, and the fans are going to win. And finally, obviously, you live for these these big fights. You're huge supporting Glasgow, many thousands of them coming down. This will be the biggest crowd that you've boxed in front of. 
and Anthony as well. And you can't wait for the atmosphere. It's going to be a great fight. Well, first time boxing in Manchester, but you know I've, I've been to a couple of events and I've, I've saw Anthony's got a great support down here. And you know, I'm sure of all the fans that are coming down like, to support all the fighters, it's going to be shaped up to be a good night. Anthony, you have kind of got the same sick mentality, really. You love to fight. You love these big nights. You live for them. You know, we looked at the Monaco card. We looked at Anthony Joshua's undercard. But with everything that had happened as well. People I wanted you to bring big time boxing man back to Manchester Arena and just a few days away now. Yeah, um, excited, very excited for Saturday night and you just mentioned it then, it's, listen, I'm sure it would have been great to be on Monaco or on Big AJ's undercard but I think it sort of says a lot about us both is that we probably would have been allowed a bit of an easier fight and um, got away with it but no, this is what we want, we both want to be involved in proper fights and um, on Saturday night that's certainly what it is, it's, uh, it's a proper fight and it's a fight worthy of topping the arena which is a special place and um, it deserves a great fight on Saturday night and I'm sure me and Ricky won't disappoint. I remember when we sat here a couple of years ago now I guess and we did that really moody thing of putting the, the, the drape down to yeah. announce that you were fighting Perez and it was like it was a very emotional time, and you two have, have both experienced some incredible nights. Now, of course, Ricky, a three-weight world champion, I remember being there with the Michele De Rocco fight, it was incredible, and even before that, of course, when he beat Roman Martinez, and for you, you know, the experience of everything around the Admiral fight, the injury, and of course, getting rocked, really, in the first fight against Perez and stopping him in the next, you know, overcoming the odds against Barroso and the Linares fight. What, what drives you for these kind of fights now? Obviously, you want to get back to change for a world title, but is it, is it the competition? The fact that you two seem to be sitting here excited and wanting to yeah. get in the ring now to fight because everybody knows how good a fight this is going to be. No, it, it genuinely is that from both boxing fans, and uh, we both know anyone in the trade, anyone knows boxing, this is going to be a good fight. This is, it can't fail. I don't see how our styles can't gel. Not to be, and that's it. I just want to be involved in big fights. I've had those big nights before and um, I say it all the time this line but no no drink or drug can give you that feeling do you know what they do like walking out in front of the arena and being involved in a good hard fight obviously I've got a young family I want to support and um, I just want to make everyone proud that's all I want to do the, the support this city gives me time after time it's um, I always say I, I've got to give it 100 percent give it leave absolutely everything in there and that's what I do again on Saturday night Big crowd on Saturday finally and last time against Jorge Linares and Perez and Barroso. Funnily enough, they didn't have much travelling support from, from Venezuela and around, but this time a few thousand Scottish coming down. It's gonna be red hot in there. Yeah, it is it's gonna be some atmosphere. It's um I genuinely think, you know, you look at the Scottish fans that'll come down and the Mancunian fans you've got you've got two of the most passionate sets of fans, not just in Britain but in the world, certainly in boxing and um I'd be proud to be a part of that and I say all through on Saturday night we lift that roof off. Thank you Anthony and I would just like to say as well I'm very proud of these two competitors as well, absolute examples to any young fighter, any young sportsman about how to apply their trade, their dedication, um, the devotion they give to their sport, the way they conduct themselves in public, in the gym, behind closed doors, in every way. These two are two of the great British fighters of all time. And it is sometimes sad that they have to fight each other on Saturday night, but this is the fight they want. This is the fight the British public want. And on Saturday night, I really feel we are gonna see a very, very special fight between two great, great champions. So enjoy it. We'll see you at the weigh-in tomorrow at the Radisson Hotel. Fight night on Saturday night, and the fighters are gonna post the photos here. They'll be available for one-on-ones. Thank you very much for coming. Cheers. Cheers.